safe! A love letter to those who risk their lives for the movies collides headfirst with the goofy romance in The Fall Guy. The film discards the bounty hunting premise of the TV show that inspired it, but retains protagonist Colt Seavers. The role originated by the $6 million man Lee Majors and played here by the $1.5 billion Ken Ryan Gosling. Hey Barbie, check me out. Despite being awkwardly strung together at times, there's ample flair to this tale of a mystery-solving stuntman, and it oozes star power. This Fall Guy is wanting in some regards, but for an action comedy that takes a tongue-in-cheek look at the film industry, its charisma and chemistry are just enough. Gosling has delivered hilarious performances in The Nice Guys, The Big Short, Crazy Stupid Love, and most recently, Barbie. But The Fall Guy might be his most accomplished comedic work yet. His dry, matter-of-fact voiceover introduces us to Colt's picture-perfect fling with camera operator Jody Moreno, played by Emily Blunt, and to his job doubling for obnoxious Playboy superstar Tom Ryder, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. But when an onset accident effectively ends his career, Colt retreats into self-loathing and cuts off all contact with everyone in his life, including Jody. 18 months later, he's forced out of retirement for a writer production. When the brash superstar's producing partner, Gail, played by Ted Lasso's Hannah Waddingham, convinces him to fly out to Sydney to work on Jody's directorial debut. However, this turns out to be a ruse by Waddingham's cunning, grinning exec because it turns out that Ryder has gone missing and Gale needs Colt's help to track him down. It's a rabbit hole that gets much deeper and much more complicated to the point where the script even calls out its own winding plot. Unsurprising considering director David Leach's experience breaking the fourth wall in Deadpool 2. I got two charges, one to get me here, one to get me home. Well, that's just lazy writing. The Fall Guy is keenly aware of its flaws. An onset writer even suggests solving the movie within a movie's third act issues through self aware commentary, which Jody dismisses as an easy out. And while this doesn't quite solve the Fall Guy's problems of occasional confusion or loss of tension, it does help the audience take them a little less seriously. Much more to the movie's point, Colt and Jody's awkward reunion leads to some rip roaring scenarios where the director's bitterness over being abandoned translates as torturous retakes of dangerous stunts. It would feel downright mean if it weren't so affectionate towards Colt's art form and so absurdly presented, with eavesdropping extras in elaborate alien and space cowboy getups. Minus the occasional third act sequence assisted by janky CGI, the stunts are, for the most part, practical, with a strong focus on technique and process. Before co-directing the first John Wick with Chad Stahelski, Leach was a stuntman himself. While he's arguably the less accomplished Wick director, the action in The Fall Guy has a sense of fun and fluidity befitting its premise. It doesn't camouflage the stunt people standing in for other actors, but this deepens our appreciation of the artifice, given the dangers involved. It's a Russian nesting doll of staged mayhem. When Gosling's double, Logan Holiday, performs a disorienting eight and a half cannon rolls in an SUV, he's standing in for an actor who's playing a character who's standing in for an actor. The insider nature of the jokes and setting is a joy for anyone who's worked on a movie set, but even folks who've never been within a thousand miles of a Universal Studios tour will find much to delight in. The biggest laughs, however, come down to Gosling's impeccable combination of dizzy sincerity and debonair charm. So how have you been? God, I hate that thumbs up still guy stuff. Though let it not go unsaid, Blunt is a fantastic straight man for him to play off of. She hides a genuine, exasperated pain behind her hardened exterior, albeit one that gives way to temptation and the desire to forgive. Together, they light the screen on fire with classic screwball energy. Yet the ball is routinely dropped when it comes to constructing scenes for Colt and Jody or capturing their interpersonal dynamics. There are visual gags aplenty, like a conversation about the use of split screen that plays out in split screen, and Leech is adept at replicating on-screen energy through bustling long takes. But when it comes to slowing down and capturing one-on-one -on -one conversations, the editing is all over the place. It disrupts the rhythm of reactions and deliveries and actively works against Blunt and Gosling in certain scenes. Thankfully, Gosling's solo sleuthing sees the heartthrob at his absolute funniest. His pitch-perfect timing elevates even the lowest hanging fruit, and he maintains a wild physicality in action comedy scenes. 
He kicks ass in a dazzling drug field sequence reminiscent of Scott Pilgrim and gracefully pratfalls his way through a chase, maintaining a straight face all the while. The Fall Guys ode to stunt work and to filmmaking in general keeps it good natured. It's hard not to adore some aspects of the movie, even when it falters. A key fight scene involving an entire stunt crew could have used more setup, which is to say, any setup at all. But while it's not hilariously rousing, it's amusing enough, with hints of admiration for the industry's unsung heroes. In fact, the anonymous nature of the work plays a key part in Colt's own emotional journey. It allows Gosling to flex his well-known dramatic chops as well, and root to a cinematic romance of movie star proportions. The Fall Guy doesn't always work, but when it does, it works like a charm. A self-reflexive love letter to Hollywood stunt work, The Fall Guy is the perfect vehicle for Ryan Gosling's comedic timing, not to mention his romantic charm alongside an equally dialed-in Emily Blunt. It doesn't always come together, thanks to some slapdash filmmaking, but it's funny and sincere enough to make for a good time. For more movie reviews, check out what we thought of Immaculate and Roadhouse. And for everything else, stick with IGN.